Hey everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in. Today I'm going to be tying up a fly that I like to call the carp corn. This is a carp fly that I've been using for a couple years now, and as the name implies, it imitates corn. Uh, it really uses for urban settings. For the hook, I'm using an Arex NS172, which is really just a uh, very strong, stout, short shank hook. You don't really need the, the length of the hook on this one. For the thread, I'm using UTC 140 denier in yellow to match the color on this. I'm just going to go ahead and get started with my thread right behind the hook eye. Build a small, short base. Again, you don't really need the, the hook on this or the hook length on this. To get started with the body material, I'm using Ecstasy from Flybox in fluorescent sunburst. This is just a yellow color. Again, this specific one is trying to imitate corn. Uh, you could also switch this up for a number of other materials, green or fluorescent chartreuse, pink or orange if you were looking for an egg fly pattern for a steelhead. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of 10 pound fluorocarbon and tie a knot in it. You can do any knot <coughs> really that you prefer. I'm tying the Orvis knot here because it's a low profile pretty quick easy knot to tie. This knot's very similar to the um, the Davy knot but just use a, a knot that is not something like the fisherman's knot where it's got a big bulky profile. You can use that if you want but I prefer this one. I also really like this because it uh, stays open really easily like this so the knot is completed at this point but I can leave the loop open like this to prep my material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of this ecstasy, I'm going to give it some twists until it will fold over on itself like that. And then I'm going to fold it over just a little bit, pinch that, make sure it's folded up. Then I'm going to take the loop that I made in the fluoro and I'm going to go ahead and cinch that down just below the tip of that to make it look like a piece of corn. Once I've got it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and snip off the extra. And this next step is optional. You don't have to do it, I prefer to, but I'm just going to go ahead and singe the butt that I cut off. I got a little too close here in this case and actually singed the, <coughs> the fluoro itself. This really isn't a problem if you do do that as long as it's still intact because uh, technically the carp is not going to be pulling on that once it's hooked. So I'm then just going to go ahead and tie this in, and I like to double it over just for insurance. Uh, again, you don't necessarily need to do that probably, but it's something that I personally like to do. So for the next part of this fly, I'm going to just literally do the same exact thing, uh, and I'm going to repeat that step again. You can honestly do this as many or as few times as you'd like. So once I get this fully tied in where I want it, I'll go ahead and repeat that process again grabbing the same piece of fluoro, tying a small knot in it, and then doubling over the corn itself, or the uh, eggs to see. Another way you can tie this fly instead of doing this fold over method is you can literally just cinch this down on a piece of this eggs to see, cut off both ends and singe just one end. Uh, if you don't feel like twisting it like I'm doing here, Again, another easy and honestly effective way. I've fished them and caught fish on them both ways, so it doesn't truly matter how you do it. Again, I'm going to insert that material, cut off the excess, and then hit it with just a little bit of a lighter. <clears throat> you can also use any sort of UV resin or something like that if you don't want to use a lighter, don't have one, but you want to secure those ends from fraying or going anywhere. Again, I'm going to secure this one on the opposite side of the hook that I did the first one on to make sure that these are pointing different ways. At this point, uh, what I want to do is take wraps uh, crossways and underneath and behind. Uh, at this point, I just like to really make sure that these are going to stay where I want them to. I like to kind of split them out in different directions, which you'll see here in a second. Uh, to really imitate a couple pieces of corn, make sure they don't get clumped together and look like it's just one giant piece or something different. 
For this last step, I'm going to take a piece of ecstasy and instead of tying a knot like I did in the first one, I'm going to put a piece on the body of the hook or the hook shank. And so I'm going to tie it in by the tip and I'm going to take two or three wraps forward just to build up another piece on the body. So again, this specific fly tied this way in this variation looks like three individual pieces of corn that have been dropped into the water. Again, you could do more. I've done it only as one, I've done it as two, and I've done it as three. I don't think I've ever done it as more than three, but this is just a pretty simple, easy way to do it. So I'm gonna secure this material, cut it off, make sure it's clean, and then build up a little bit of a head and grab my whip finish tool and finish this fly off. For the head on this fly, I like to use a little bit of solar as bone dry to make sure it doesn't come apart. You can also use some solar as bone dry or a similar material to force the uh, tails, if you will, in a certain direction if you need to or desire to. What I usually do, as you just saw me do, is just pull it out in different directions. So again, this is the carp corn. Time up, fish them. Let me know what you think.